Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. So today we're talking about coffee. Coffee in a grid down SHTF situation, um, how to store it and how to roast it. Um, and when I first started prepping, uh, this issue was one of the first issues that came up. Um, you know, what, what do I do about coffee? I think like most preppers, we just assume that um, our only option is freeze dried coffee. And I did get a lot of freeze dried coffee and freeze dried coffee isn't bad if it's all you have. I mean, it's better than nothing, but you know, it's just a bitter cup of coffee. And I was determined to find a better cup of coffee that um, I could store for a uh, long term. And basically what that brought me to was whole green coffee beans. Um, basically these are just coffee beans in their natural state. Um, the way I store these is I store them the same way I would store pinto beans. Um, I keep mine in one gallon mylar bags with a 300 cc oxygen absorber. Um, and that should keep this coffee fresh, retain its freshness and its flavor for up to 20 years. So um, the other advantage to whole grain coffee beans is it's a way more affordable. It's much more affordable um, when it's unroasted. So anyways, um, we're going to roast these on an open fire. Probably the best way, more, more efficient way to do it would be on your stovetop or like an outdoor burner. Um, that way you could control the heat source a little better. But uh, for today's demonstration, I just thought it'd be, you know, more accurate to just do it over a fire um, in case you had no power and you had to resort to um, fire for your heat source. So. Anyways, that's the way we're going to do it. It's going to be a lot more fun doing it that way. Um, it's also something you can do uh, on camping trips. I always bring my uh, my tripod and my cast iron pop on our camping trips, and we'll just roast my coffee this way. Um, it is kind of a long process, but it's it's fun, and um, it, def it definitely makes for a much better tasting cup of coffee. So um, anyways, yeah, stay tuned. This is going to be a good video. All right, guys, now we got our fire going. Um, I just thought I'd give you a couple tips here. So um, before you start roasting your coffee, um, especially if you're doing it alone, you don't have any help, uh, you want to make sure that you have everything you need close by because once you start roasting your coffee and, and stirring the beans, um, you're just not going to be able to stop. Um, so if for some reason your fire starts to die down, uh, it's a good idea to make sure that you've already pre you know, you have a lot of pre-cut wood real close by. You can just throw it in there and it just doesn't interrupt the, the uh, stirring process. Um, and the reason that's critical is if you stop stirring and you just let those beans sit on your pan, um, they could burn. And once your beans burn, it's pretty much your coffee shot. You got to start over. So um, um, might as well show you some of the other things that we're going to need for this video. So we have a uh, tripod and this isn't necessary. You could just use a pan, um, but today I'm using uh, my cook, my tripod and I'm going to be using this uh, cast iron Dutch oven. Um, but like I said, you could just use a pan over a fire. It just means you got to hold the pan. Um, so we'll just go ahead and put that over. The other thing I have, and this isn't that critical uh, of, a, of a tool here, but I just like it. It just helps me get an idea of the heat source, but this is just a, a heat gun. Uh, it's an infrared th thermometer. And you know, I can just point this at here because I like to uh, start my beans at about 400 degrees. And just, um, so I wait until the pan gets about 400 degrees and then I will, we're not quite there yet. Um, and then I'll put my beans in at that point and just kind of gradually heat them. You definitely don't want to, uh, you know, get your pan piping red hot and then throw your beans in there. That's an easy way to singe your beans and burn your beans. So um, anyways, once you do this a few times, you kind of, you get an idea of what you have to do. And before long, you can do it. You don't need, won't even need a heat gun. Um, the other thing I have with me is I have a spoon 
Um, some people just like to use a pan and shake the pan, but it's just a lot of extra work holding a heavier pan. So I just, you know, keep the, keep the spoon in here and stirring like this. Uh, the other thing I have besides a towel, um, just in case I need to grab the uh, pot here, just a measuring cup. So we're going to be doing about uh, three quarters of, of a cup of, of coffee beans today. And the other thing I have is a um, just a strainer, a steel colander strainer here. And this helps with once the beans are done, I transfer the beans over to this, uh, this strainer here and I just start um, uh, stirring them up and blowing on them the, to try to get one the uh, the uh, flakes off of it I can't remember the name of it there's a name for the flakes but it's basically the husks of the coffee bean you got to get those off and they just blow off so when you're you know when you're flipping the beans up you just blow down and it will get the uh, the husks off and also it'll cool the beans and to stop them from roasting so um, yeah, I'm just going to go ahead and put my coffee beans, put my, measure out my coffee beans here. Actually, you know what, for today, I think I'll just do, I'm going to do one cup. We'll just do one cup. Uh, the other thing you're going to need, um, not immediately, but you will need, is a coffee grinder and I just have an electric coffee grinder because um, I can control the grind a little bit better but worst case scenario you, if, if there was no power <clears throat> you could just get a, uh, a handheld um, grinder or a, uh, what you call it, a uh, manual grinder all right so um, I'll get this fire going a little more and then uh, we'll be back. Okay, I've been roasting these beans for about eight minutes now. So they're uh, getting really close to the first crack. Um, I will say the, one of the challenges to roasting your coffee beans on an open fire like this is that it is a little hard to distinguish the... the uh, the crack of the coffee beans from the crack of the fire so you kind of have to stop a little bit to listen and then uh and then just keep stirring but we're getting close to that first crack um i just wanted to kind of update you and show you what the beans are looking like at this point but in a couple minutes here um we'll be we'll be really close to um to, uh, determining what type of brew coffee we want so uh, I'll be back all right so we are just about done here I am way past the well not way past the first crack but a couple minutes after the first crack so I got to be careful not to leave this on too long um, so that I don't burn it but um, definitely got a rich deep roast going here so i'm gonna uh go ahead and take this off the fire here and uh transfer it over to our strainer hopefully i can do this with one hand holding the camera all right now i'm going to start I don't know if you can see that. I don't got a very good light out here. Woo, that's hot. Sorry, folks. So basically, I'm I'm just shaking the coffee around and blowing on it to get the uh, chaff off the coffee beans. Um, kind of the the chaff is what gives the uh, coffee most of its smoky flavor. Uh, it's just the, the burning of the chaff will kind of create a lot of smoke. Usually you, you see you, when you see smoke coming off your coffee beans, 
it's not the beans that are burning it's the uh it's the chaff the, the husk of the bean that's burning and uh, you want to make sure to get as much of it out as you possibly can because um, if you don't it will it will leave to a really bitter tasting cup of coffee so all right i'm going to keep shaking this um until i get these beans to cool down and the uh all that chaff out of there so all right i'll be back all right guys you were back uh, i got these coffee beans all nicely roasted to a uh, medium roast and we're just going to go ahead and add them to our grinder here And uh, I got my grinder set to a six grind, which is good for um, these campfire, camp style type of uh, coffee percolators. All right, so we'll go ahead and get this ground up. All right, so I'm just gonna go ahead and add our coffee to my percolator here. Oh yeah, it's smelling amazing. I don't know if you can see that, but yeah, it turned out good. So we got kind of a coarse grind, and the reason why that's good for these type of percolators is that it, uh, so when it starts percolating, it just the, um, the coffee grains don't go through these, these holes. These holes can kind of be big, and you won't end up with coffee grounds in your coffee. So... We've already got a pot full of water here. I'm going to place that in my coffee pot. Put this grinder to the side. Go ahead and put our, our lid on. And uh, get this on the uh, fire. I'm going to add a few more pieces of wood here. We'll get that uh, brewing, and uh, I'll be back. All right, guys, we're uh, just about done brewing here. I'm just going to go ahead and take the pot off the fire. All right, I finally gave in and got a glove. That rag just wasn't cutting it. Uh, got my best dad ever here. <laughs> All right, let's see how it looks. Looking good. Beautiful. All right, so I just take my coffee with a little cream and that's it. And I'll stir it with an authentic prepper spoon here. Okay, here we go. It's hot. I'm going to be honest, that tastes like raccoon piss. Just kidding. No, that's, that's perfect. A little light. Yeah, that's good coffee. All right, guys. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, make sure to uh, like the video, subscribe to my channel. I'm a new channel. I'm just getting going. I'm still making these videos on my phone, so it's been a little tricky, but I, uh, I appreciate you guys sticking with me, and I really appreciate all the uh, awesome comments I've been getting in my videos. Um, you guys have just been amazing. And uh, I, uh, I look forward to making more videos for you. So um, be sure to subscribe and be sure to thumbs up the video. All right, guys, I'll see you on the next one.